And we are live. Hello, everyone. Welcome to a new episode of Global Citizens. My name is Calvin. I am the show's host, and of course, I am also its creator. So, my guest for today is Miss Camille Denier. Uh, Camille is a TCK born in France to French parents and who has grown up and lived in Singapore, which is my second home, Milan, Paris, <laughs> London, and Dublin. She is an artist and the founder of Project Roots, an art and home lifestyle brand that she has created to bring stability, strength, and roots to the life of those who are just like her, who are in search of home. And she does this through an artistic exploitation, uh, sorry, exploration of trees <laughs> and sells her art pieces. That, yeah, um, I'll just edit that out. <laughs> and sells her art pieces directly online through personalized commissions. So Project Root started as a side project around five years back when Camille went through a TCK identity crisis. Yeah, we all feel that. Mm -hmm. And as she didn't feel like she belonged to her own culture and her bird country, France, at that time she was living close to nature and inspired by the strong grounding energy of the natural world, she started drawing and exploring trees. So without further ado, I will give her the spotlight again. So maybe I hope I've done enough justice for introduction. How are you, Camille? <laughs> yeah, that was great. Uh, I'm I'm good. I'm good. Thanks, Calvin. How are you doing over there? Fantastic. Except for the Wi-Fi, I am really <laughs> terrified about Wi-Fi. But yeah, the show must go on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Apologies about that. It's Apologies again. No worries. I will cut off the earlier part, and we will. Well, we'll have a smoother broadcast. No worries. <laughs> All right, uh, Camille, so the first question is always the one that is always a mixed reaction for a TCK, and mm -hmm. we hope you're prepared for it. Please define home for yourself, and is it pertaining more to the people or location? Mm. <laughs> Where is home? Um, my answer is generally around the fact that home, home is a feeling to me. Right. Home is, is, feeling, is feeling safe, and it's feeling loved and that's what makes home for me and so that can that, that can be you know associated to uh, people or places so for example and, and that's varied a lot in my life like where those feelings right. are but it's, it's definitely a place of safety and and right, right now you know my home in london that i've built with my partner is is you know is that because of those feelings of safety and love but as growing up, it was mainly, um, you know, that feeling of home and, and, and where, where it felt safe and loved was with my parents, wherever they were. And growing up, you know, growing up abroad in, in different countries, it was really about like the four of us with my brother, like just creating that home because we were the four of us together and we felt safe and we created that nest wherever we went. And, right. you know, of course, my parents have a home as well. And that's, that's where there's a lot of love and safety for me. And so going there feels like home so yeah it's really a feeling of safety and love fantastic fantastic mm -hmm. okay so for those of you who are watching this for the very first time global citizen is an online platform where that invite and primarily advocate third culture kids such as both of us here the reason being is that i want people to actually understand that this intercultural lifestyle is not an extended vacation it's not a life at a holiday places every single day 24 7 we actually live with a different form of identity we need to adjust who we are in fact sometimes our mindset and our expectation because some certain areas do not encourage it and because well we just can't be who ourselves because we can't define who we are and mm -hmm. along with that i've also invited global citizens of multiple criteria the reason being is that I want people to understand that this intersection of life, of identity, is not something easily done. And I hope people understand that there's actually a lot more sensitivity required to it. And in this time of, well, post-pandemic, I don't want to, well, we are still in the pandemic, but the thing is, is that we have advanced somewhat from it. There are a lot of unnecessary, unfounded hatred to certain races and it's heartbreaking to see it so hopefully when people actually can listen to intercultural stories they actually understand that everyone is just 
like everybody else. We all are just humans. We're just trying to make it through the day. We all have our loved ones, and we are just trying to give the best for our loved ones. So yeah, uh, I will pass the spotlight back to Camille again. Now I actually know that most DCKs will give me the in a sense cop out answer. So uh, I want to ask you: Is there any particular one of the homes that you have grown up in that you feel closely affiliated to that you feel strongly drawn to? One of the places that I've grown up in, um, yeah, actually, well, yes, it's right. the one I chose to live in now. So it's it's London. Um, I grew up right. part of my life in London from when I was roughly ten years old to fifteen years old, like five, four or five years, and right. they were really I don't know, um, marking and important years for me. And also, it's it's really a felt a place where I felt like I belonged when right. I moved here. And so I think ever since I left again, when I was 15 to move back to France with my family, I've been trying to come back to London. Like it's been my life mission to come back to where it felt most like home. And so finally, you know, after moving abroad again for, for you know, seeking sort of a better job and I managed to come back to London and now like bought a flat, like, you know, decorating it, making it home. So yeah, definitely London. All right, fair enough, fair enough. It's a city. It's not a big home, but it's a city. Yeah. I've actually never visited London before. Uh, ah. I've always heard a lot of wonderful things about it. Uh, I actually do work with a British employer once. He is a <laughs> lovely man to have when you are in a bar because in a fight, but he is not the easiest person to work with as because you may not know whether they are firing you. Yeah. <laughs> Joking at you, and most of the time is well. It's not the best thing, so mm. hopefully I get a I get a better opportunity the next time. But yeah, that's actually <laughs> I hope so. I've always wanted to visit London. Sorry, no, I said I hope so. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. All right then. Okay. Uh, so this is something that I want to ask with regards to TCKs moving abroad. Do you ever feel that when you do so, when you move to that new country, in a sense, it's like a morning experience whereby you fear that you, well, I mean, nobody passed away, thankfully, hopefully nobody does. But the thing is, is that in a sense, when you move to a new place, you fear that you will never come back there. In a sense, do you feel that it's a morning process and how do you handle it, actually? Mm. Yeah, I think, you know, moving, countries and cities and homes is right. is a change, right? Like it's it's a transformation, it's a change. And as part of the change process, there will always be a grieving part and a part where you have to accept that you're letting go of something and you're you're saying goodbye to some something that you don't know if you'll find again or in the same way at least. So I think in that sense, like there is of course a grieving process because even though you're choosing to move or maybe sometimes you're not choosing to move when you're a child and you're with your family you're not choosing to move but um as you as you become an adult maybe it's it's a choice you make and but even in in that process you're 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 saying goodbye to something and people and a way of life and a home and familiarity with places and you know a lot of things and so of course you're grieving right you're you're going through those stages of being really, really sad and then being angry a little bit at the choice you made and right. angry maybe even like, you know, at the people or the new culture you integrated, but for no reason, but just because you're actually grieving the past, you know. Right. Um, so yeah, the, the emotions you feel um, are definitely grieving emotions at some point throughout the process. It's not the only emotions, thankfully, because otherwise we wouldn't, we wouldn't uh, you know, enjoy it as well and, and, and have, have positive feelings from that. But but grieving is part of the process of moving because it's a change and it means saying goodbye to something you're losing. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is actually, well, uh, <clears throat> uh, sorry. Uh, we will actually now jump into why I actually invited you here of course. And that is your project, which is project roots. Again, it's exploration, mm -hmm. not exploitation. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. Uh, do you mind sharing with us the concept behind Project Roots? Like, what was your work history that led into it? Because the mm. thing is, is this, 
I think this is a common phrasing for us PCK is that we never have roots. It's because some of us have two homes, some of us could have 12 homes. But the thing is, is that we've never been able to find a direct footing is because we've never been mm. able to connect with the people there. So the term rootless is always something that is always associated with us. And the thing is, is that I've always, I've always told TCKs or even adults who actually move to a new place, find a creative outlet is because it is, will serve as in a sense, a testament to that global life that you've mm. pursued before. And for your case, you actually make it into a career. But the thing is, mm. is why is it directly a route? Of course, this is of course your own mindset. So maybe if you don't mind sharing with us about it. Yeah, of course. Well, it's a nice transition with your previous question because I mean, trees don't move, right? Yes. Uh, it was learned intentionally. Yeah, exactly. So they don't move, right? They, 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 they're rooted and, um, and that keeps them strong and stable in one place. Um, whereas us, yeah, third culture kids growing up in different countries. So as you explained, I, I grew up before I was 18 in, in several different countries around the world and cultures. And so that meant that there was no space or time to, yeah, really grow deep roots. It was maybe a bit more spread out, but it was like, you know, didn't have that space and, and to, to, to grow them deep. But so uh, Project Roots was born from, from kind of two different channels, right? One is the fact that since I'm young, my mom is an artist. And so I've been doing a lot of um, art as a hobby. It's always been my, if, if you want now, I realize it's actually my, my mindfulness exercise. Like it's always been the thing that I've done to relax and, um, since I can remember. So it's something that I also brought with me in the different countries that I moved to. I was always, you know, translating that hobby into a local version, like, uh, you know, making calligraphy uh, in, in when I was living in Asia, but then doing like very formal studio uh, drawings uh, in, in, in France or uh, adapting to the UK, you know, University of the Arts, a lot more, a lot more, a lot more explorational and creative. And so um, that's always been a part of me. Now, I also studied, um, you know, geography, business, uh, economics, and out of that started a full-time job um, um, in, in, in sales and partnerships in, in a big company. And so um, I always had that parallel life, let's say, like, a, you know, a, a big part of me felt like really creative and, and was like using art as a way to, to release things, relax, but also explore like parts of my personal development um, and, and questioning that I had. And so Project Roots was was kind of born from, from, from that where I'd been doing a lot of art and having finally sort of landed a full-time job, you know, after, after university, it's like everybody's, all students like trauma, like what am I gonna do after uni? What's my first job gonna be? Well, having landed that and being in a settled place uh, at the time I was in, in Dublin, um, just allowed me to have a lot more space to think about my creative side and my art. And um, and at the time, as I was telling you, like I went through sort of an yeah, it was an identity crisis, like a lot of third culture kids know, where I, I suddenly I had been growing up in in very international environments, being around people from all different cultures, and uh, even in France when I lived there, uh, it was an international school, so also didn't have that real connection to the French culture in that case. And then I joined this company, but I was working in a, in, in the French sales team. So I was in a team of 50 French people working with French clients. And even though I was doing that from Dublin, I had never been in a more French environment. And so suddenly I was hit with like, I don't know any of these songs. I don't know any of these TV shows they're talking about. I don't even speak the same language. Like some words I'm like, what, what does that mean? Um, because it's all like slang or something. And, and, and culturally also, I just didn't feel like I fit in, in, in that team. And, um, and so, yeah, it was born from that feeling. At the same time, my art being something I had developed a lot, I was at a point where I, I kind of, you know, created things from, from scratch and just like translated what I saw around me into art. And nature has, had always been something that was a strong, you know, calling for me in a place where I love to relax. And, you know, we have a family home that's surrounded with nature and it's always like, maybe I associate that as well to, to home in a way like nature. So that's interesting. Um, but mostly this idea of roots, right? This idea of like, I, I'm, I've always been unable to be like a tree and, and have that, that growth deep down. I've never found a, a soil where that was so nurturing that I wanted to like grow my roots. And, and what fascinated me the most was the fact that 
it doesn't move. And it's the core of the tree, right? The trunk and those branches and the roots, like these are things that don't move regardless of the seasons. Like they may fool you, right? With their leaves and their flowers. And, you know, that's the evolution. That's, that's the natural world um, evolving. And it's just like us, you know, our social dynamics, like we evolve, we become a bit like this, a bit like that the next day, but that also changes. But what stays true is that trunk and those roots and those branches. And so that's what inspired me. And that's what, you know, without knowing it, I was, I was going on this journey. But at the time, I didn't even know I was a third culture kid, funnily enough. I only, I only like connected the dots like three years later, two or three years later, when I came across the, um, uh, the book, uh, Third Culture Kid Growing Up Among Worlds by um, Michael Pollack and Ruth Van Regen. And um, so, yeah, that's kind of like the story behind Project Roots. And, and now... Yes, I was in a full time job still um, in the corporate world and I was growing this and I suddenly I felt like so connected to to my artwork in a way like I'd never been. And the more I talked about it and talked about the story behind it, like I'm telling you now, the more I felt like it, I realized it resonated with so many people. And, you know, not only third culture kids, but a lot of people who are living abroad And London is a very is a place where a lot of people are, are immigrants and or, you know, there's multicultural couples and like, and so suddenly around me, like there was a great echo and a great like response. And I thought, well, maybe there's something more, right? Like um, I did one exhibition and I sold like three pieces, which was really cool. And it really gave me that feedback that I needed to, to realize like, this can be my life. You know, it doesn't have to be my hobby. Like there's something more to it. And so it took me a while, right? Like I was still working after that for about a year and a half. I did a sabbatical from my, from my, you know, full-time job, which was a great opportunity. And I took three months to really grow the project. I set up my website. I set up my, I did that video that uh, about the story behind the project, uh, which you can see on my, on my Instagram. And I, yeah, I just grew the idea further and, and the products as well. Um, the, the artwork, of course, the designs and, suddenly realized, okay, you know, there's a tipping point and now I have a choice to make. And I thought, you know, I, I busted all, I tried really hard to pump up my confidence, bust all the myths around like artists that are, you know, starving and um, never make any money. And I was like, that's wrong. You know, I can, I can, I can do this. And this is, this is my purpose now. And I had worked with a coach, professional coach for about a year, like every two weeks had a one hour call. And that's what I needed to really understand that I was in full alignment with this project and my purpose and my values, everything, like it just embodied what I wanted to do with my life. And so end of last year, I went through this complete um, shift where I left my full-time job and I'm now, um, you know, uh, growing this tree forest of, of artwork around the world. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. <laughs> I've actually invited uh, I've actually invited Jason Fogel before. He is a renowned art consultant in New York City. Uh, oh, sorry, he's currently living in Brooklyn. My apologies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, back then I, I recalled that to him, of course, like if, if you want to pursue the life of an artist, you have to fully devote your time into it. And like what you said earlier, such as on the on the stories that artists is going to be starving first mm -hmm. before you actually make something out of yourself for it. I think it is actually not only as an artist, I've had several content creators on this, on this show before, and every single one of them always says, this, says the one thing that actually helped to push their success. And that is that if it's something that gives them the passion, it gives them the motivation. And for your case now, at least it actually breaks the money then mm. it's not something that you should give up pursuing so mm. thank good good on you for that thank you for showing us that well our intercultural leave. life yeah our mm. intercultural life can lead to something interesting along with that mm. okay i actually earlier it's a bit of a piggyback from what you said earlier though mm -hmm. what do you feel has been the ultimate blessing and at the same time as to balance it up, the curse of being a TCK. Because the thing is, is that mm. while some of us have the wonderful opportunity to expand, to live in a horizon outside of our own passport country, some may not be so lucky. Some of them could be sent to places which is more towards a refugee area. Mm. And as a result, sometimes they feel that this is something that is a giant bane in their life. It is unfair. 
But the thing is, is that, well, we live in a society that sees the exterior and then we all, we convince ourselves that this is the reality. But the thing is, is there's always a deeper layer to it. So mm. do you mind sharing with us about the ups and downs of your life as a TCK? Yeah, of course. Um, yeah, of course, like when you're uh, growing up, <clears throat> sorry, growing up as a, as a TCK, um, you tend to feel it's unfair as well because... No worries, no worries. Um, if you need the time a little bit more, it's fine. It's fine, don't worry. And no, no, I, I'm, I, it's just that, you know, when you're, yeah, when you're growing up as a TCK, you, um, you feel it's unfair, just like what you described, although it's a very different, uh, obviously, um, life story and, and context. But when you're, when you're a child and you're taken from one country to the other without the choice, if you want necessarily, that, that feels unfair. And, um, but there's a lot, you know, of beautiful things. And like you say, it's all about the ups and downs. And um, on the upside, I think it's just so enriching as an experience, um, not only in the moment uh, when you're living it, but also like it marks the rest of your life, right? And we, I think I'm not a, a pro uh, uh, at uh, child education, but from what I read and understand, like before 10 years old is when you your personality is defined. And, you know, growing up in, in cultures where, you know, when I was six years old, I was this little French girl with blonde curly hair, like eating out of a Hello Kitty lunchbox with chopsticks, her durian, because she loved durian. And now like, I can't smell it. <laughs> um, um, it just, yeah, it just marks you in a way that you just feel super fluid and super adaptable, right? Like, I think that's the key word that I hear a lot and that I really feel is that you become really, really adaptable to any environment. Like you just kind of blend in and and find a way to 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 find, you know, feel like you're part of a community and and you're not afraid of anything, right? Nothing feels foreign. Everything feels familiar in a way. Like you just kind of take things up and, and as you go along and just make it your own. And that's a really strong strength. And I think, and also a big up has been the resilience uh, we get from, from this. And I think this current pandemic has really shown like how resilience is a key, you know, attribute and skill and, and value that we all benefit from um, in life. And so this resilience is something extremely positive that we get from, from this experience. Um, of course, friends all over the all over the world, and that's incredible. Like uh, just being able to, you know, travel and not just be in a hotel, but stay at someone's home and and live that experience. But also in the same city in London, I have friends from from different parts of the world who are now settled here, and you know, I get to experience Malaysian culture, of course, French culture, um, Vietnamese culture, and like every day, every every week. So that's that's an incredible like way to surround ourselves in life. Um, of course, it doesn't come without its it struggles, right? And I think um, this all comes from hardship and from from going through hard times and and being in situations where you have to find a, a way to be happy, like digest the situation and be happy. It comes back to what we were saying about grieving. So you know, it's as if we we keep losing things in life and we have to um, go through that change and grieving process which is obviously a very difficult process, right? You have to process, you have to understand yourself, you have to, yeah, understand the emotions you're going through. You have to be really good at talking about it, especially when you're in a family context. Um, and, and you have to constantly make new friends. And I thought that was the hardest part. I still remember like when I moved to, when I was 15 years old, I had two, two, just two years of high school left and moved back from London to France. And it was like, I moved from this super cool life in London, you know, expat life and in the central of London and was just started going clubbing and stuff. And then moved back to France in this village, like maybe an hour away from Paris next to a forest. And I remember telling my dad, like, I'm just going to do my two years of high school and not make any friends and just work. Like, I, I, I can't, I don't have the, the energy. Of course, that's not what happened. Like, you make friends because you're a social being and, you know, that's exactly, it's exactly the opposite that happens. But like that was always really difficult. And I think that, you know, comes with me in life in a way that I, yeah, probably feel um, alone sometimes. Like I just feel like maybe I haven't found my community or I don't always feel like I belong or I, like I found my, my crowd, let's say. So I'm constantly looking for communities to join that 
will be will be places where where I feel like I I belong. Um, but yeah, overall, it's 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 really enriching. It's it just but the richness comes from overcoming the hardships and the the yeah the difficulties that you have to encounter uh, when you when you move a lot and you have to renew recreate everything from scratch. Um, I think. That's about it. And I think maybe interestingly enough, like this recreation, this like building, um, you have to rebuild everything. That's definitely something that is extremely in my personality. Like I always say I'm a builder and I, I build things, I create things. And so maybe that comes from this as well. Like the fact that, you know, you have to constantly re recreate um, uh, things from scratch when you when you grow up as a third culture kid. So that's a very positive thing. I've just actually thought about that. So that's great. Okay, pretty cool. You actually found out something while yeah. you are saying. Yeah, exactly. Pretty cool. I think in a sense, our life is like Legos, I guess. is mm. uh, I hope I uh, yeah. trademarked by the actual Lego Corporation. Please don't sue me. <laughs> the reason being is that, well, we are built in a sense to be in this way, but we can actually be disassembled and, well, we could be conjoined with something else. And mm -hmm. as a result, we always feel that there's a certain part of us that, well, people may, well, it depends on how you see it. Some people actually feel insecure about it. For myself, I was actually a little bit more aggressive on it is because to me, I got too tired to the, I got too tired of feeling low. I got too tired of feeling sick of not being able to adjust to a certain home that I just said, mm -hmm. you know what, if you guys want to hate me for being me, do so. I don't mm. like any of you anyway. That was actually, I actually was a little bit opposite for compared to you back then is because I'm actually more of a loner mm. is because is because I guess we tend to get too tired is that because even when I was living in Singapore, we mm. actually moved to different school because once mm. you get from a primary which to secondary, which is primary to middle school, then mm. we actually in a sense we become a domestic tck on its mm. own right so it created a different kind of paradox on its own that to the point mm. that you not just want to be able to feel comfortable enough in your own mind that you just want to say who has the right to judge me when mm. this is who i am this is actually a struggle that in a sense i've been trying to disassemble in an adult as an adult is because I know as humans, we need to be social beings, but the thing is, is that uh, Albert Einstein once said that logic is culmination of everything that is negative that has gathered in your life till the age of 80. And well, I've had too many negatives to the point that I guess I really need mm. to dismantle a little bit of my logic. Mm. Oh, I can, I can see that. I, 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 uh, I, I understand. I haven't gone, felt so much of the negatives, I guess, as an adult, more maybe when I was a kid. But um, right. yeah. Fair enough. Very fair enough. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So what do you actually, what do you actually hope, though, to accomplish with Project Roots in the long run? Is because there's no way you want to do something and, well, you don't hope to accomplish something as part of it, right? So maybe you can share with us a little bit more on that because just to share a little bit more with the audience, mm. your previous job was actually at Google. In fact, mm -hmm. that is actually the photo that was used for her title cover, which the second one, which has the one of her drawings. And I created the graphic whereby she appeared in a, in a segregated part. That was actually a photo of you do it being an MC in Google, yeah. the engine that is actually running this whole thing. So what was the what was the motivation behind that? Because you leave the organization with mm. which is considered to be the ruler mm. of the world to now pursuing something which has mm -hmm. such a risk to it. And on the side note, I actually want to ask, is it true that Google's food court has all the different gourmets of around the world? <laughs> I'm just very curious about that. <laughs> yes, uh, as Googlers, we're very well uh, uh, treated in terms of the um, the benefits, um, and and there's a lot of a lot of great food. Um, 
very local food though. So that, that's also really good depending on the country. So yeah, a lot of choice and um, delicious stuff. <laughs> but yeah, working for, um, uh, for such a big company was a choice and something that I really, really enjoyed. Um, I spent almost seven years there. And uh, I think, you know, after a while, um, like everywhere, you start to to question what you do. And the, what's great with Google is that you can change, like, you know, jobs and almost careers within the company because because there are so many different functions and, and teams and products. So that's a fantastic opportunity. So I came to a point where I was, you know, rethinking, like, what's my next move, et cetera. And, and I think what I realized, and coming back to this um, TCK and, um, you know, link, is that I realized that I had... I had joined Google and I was really happy there because I was, I felt like I belonged. I was part of a global community, like literally like one of the biggest in the world where you can travel to any like city and have an office, have a community of people that you can go for a drink with. And that was so powerful for me as a third world culture kid, like feeling like there was somewhere um, that, that felt, I was I'm almost going to say like, felt like home, right? Because it was, it was where it was safe and it was where I felt loved because I was part of a community. And so um, that was a really um, strong pillar in my life and something that I really, really enjoyed being a part of. Um, but I guess, you know, at some point I just, as I was telling you, like Project Roots took a lot of, of place in my life. And and after a while, like you realize maybe maybe that's not enough, right? Maybe, maybe what I, I need from a, a a work and a purpose is not only a place where I feel safe and and I feel loved. It's it's something that takes me further into the future and into like uh, you know what it is that I'm pursuing. What's my purpose in life? And so, um, having felt really soothed from this whole like work experience, I I, I and, and and growing Project Roots, you know, really strongly on the side, it, it just felt like a natural transition, I would say. And I think in my personal life, I had a lot more of that safety and love from being settled in London, uh, finally, um, because I started working at Google in Dublin and then I moved and uh, transitioned to another role in London. And so being finally in London where I had always wanted to be because it was the calling of home and being with my partner, you know, buying a flat, it just suddenly I had all these feelings, uh, you know, that I Google gave me throughout the last seven years um, in a different way. And so maybe I didn't need it as much. So I think that was kind of the transition that operated. If I look really at the deeper level, right, of like the third culture kid mind of mine that was thinking, you know, what are these drivers? What are these forces? And so, yeah, definitely being part of a big global community was very powerful. And actually in my goodbye email, I wrote um, that I like my time at, at Google is the longest I've ever committed to anything like six years and a half is the longest I, I've, I've lived in a, like it's longer than what I've ever lived in a place. It's longer than any relationship I've had. Um, and it's longer than, you know, any home my parents have had even. So hopefully the one with your current partner lasts a lot longer. Yeah, of course. It's also, you know, the, the age um, that I haven't got there yet, but still, you know, uh, it could be, but like, yeah, so it, it suddenly real made me realize, you know, that this was so important in my life. But I was ready for for you know thinking about my future and disconnecting from like those needs and more like because I had them in another like in my personal life and 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 taking you know the next step into the open the openness and all the possibilities that Project Roots came with. Um, of course, it's it's terrifying. I'm not gonna lie, right? Like I'm starting a, a company, like an art an art company in the middle of a pandemic. Um, leaving a full-time job at Google, which was obviously um, a great place to work uh, around a wonderful community. And so, yeah, it's, it's, it's trade-offs, but I can really feel like, you know, this is my purpose. And to answer your question a bit more about how I see Project Roots in the future, um, I think that's also the main driver of this choice to, to invest myself fully in this, is that I can really see Project Roots, um, you know, being that, 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 community that I want to be a part of, but I want to create that community of, of people who, you know, just like me feel the same, you know, struggle and trying to root, you know, even though you move, even though you, uh, yeah, you experience maybe an international life and, and different lifestyle, but this idea of like understanding what are your roots and revealing them and owning them and finding a way to, to, to grow them in your life is is something that I want to to share and grow and hopefully you know uh, I, 
my, my vision is that everyone would have a little tree in their home as a reminder of who they are, kind of like without doing a blaspheme, but in, in, in Asia, in a lot of countries, you have the little um, ancestor homes and like the little sanctuaries where there's a place in the home that's dedicated to the roots, right? To the ancestors of the family to, and so in that same idea, it's, it's this connection, this constant connection to who we are. And so it comes, you know, with helping everyone feel good at home, feel, understand themselves and, and develop personally. So I have a lot of other projects for Project Roots. That's why it's not only my artwork, but it's going to grow into, um, you know, maybe maybe intercultural trainings as well, um, but also a platform in general and a community for, for people to discuss these and uh, these topics. And also a lot a lot of focus on, you know, building a home, like home decor. So not only my own artwork, but you know, artwork from all other artists that bring nature into the home in that same way or who create work that makes people feel really good at home. Um, so, yeah, a lot of um, uh, a lot of visions, let's say, for the future for uh, for this brand that's really geared towards helping us feel good and understand ourselves better and connect with our roots. Wonderful, wonderful. If you ever do pursue, decided to branch further, yeah, that's a pun intended. Branch further and to intercultural training, please let me know. Uh, yeah. I will be something that I'm definitely be happy to help. Since well, <laughs> this is something that I've been doing for three years now. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's it's a little new for me, so yeah, I'll reach out. Thank you. Okay. Uh, earlier, the two parts that you mentioned on being love and home. Yeah. So mm -hmm. uh, my, I need to back sidetrack a bit on this as the main priorities of the global citizens for at least for the forthcoming several for forthcoming weeks is either uh, is that one of the main primary issue is on the recent well anti Asian hate, which mm -hmm. is, as I said in the beginning, it is something that weighs heavily on my mind. Hmm. When I was in Singapore, I served Singapore Armed Forces during the National Service. We were given the Singapore Armed Forces rival 21. And when we hold that gun, we were told that that is our wife. As somebody who is born outside of Singapore, to me, that is something that's really heartening because I've been given something that is supposed to protect my adopted home. And at the mm -hmm. same time, it's something that is terrifying is because it has the chance to take away a life now we are in a situation whereby something had of that nature has been used to take away the life of somebody who i can look in a in a screen either on my laptop or any of my other devices and i can imagine that person is me or any of my loved ones mm. it is heartbreaking to see that and yeah the thing is, is that a lot of a lot of third culture kids could be traced back as early as 1950s, or even six, or even in the 1940s. Is because well, they were if we, our forefathers were immigrants in a sense, and they regard that other place that they've moved to as a home, and mm. it is 2021 now, and their descendants could still be in a place that doesn't want to regard them as a home. That is something that mm -hmm. I hope that people can actually understand though. But for your case, I want to ask, because one of your home is actually Singapore, which is in mm -hmm. Asia. What do you feel has allowed Singapore to welcome you? And what do you feel that this mindset, could it be translated to other nations? Uh, yeah, that's an interesting question. I so Singapore, I I was living there when I was quite young, so I was maybe um, five to eight years old, I think five to five to nine, something like this. So it was where I learned English. Um, I didn't speak a word of English before getting there. It's where I learned Japanese, actually. Um, Wait, you speak Japanese? I no. don't speak Japanese. No, if you I want, I can speak Mandarin, but I don't speak Japanese. No, I learned Japanese when I was a kid, but I don't remember. I know how to count and I know how to sing happy birthday. But um, Were you watching anime last time or... Okay. 
the so so Singapore has a very far away. I guess I have a very. I used to have a distant relationship because Singapore because it was when I was quite young. So, um, what was great is that we went back there um, when I was about twelve, I think, with my family, um, and that really helped to you know make me reconnect with um, with Singapore as a as a place where I belonged a little bit. And also, most recently, my parents actually were living there for the past three years. And so I visited them maybe twice a year, which also made me sort of reconnect. And um, my brother was also living there for a while. So in the end, I, I have, I've had an, an ongoing relationship with, with Singapore, I guess. Um, I wouldn't say to the point to call it a home or to have a specific opinion about it. But I think maybe what I can share is that from, from, from my family's experience in general is that Singapore is a place that is... Um, you know, very, I would say, uh, diverse in terms of the, the expats who live there. So there's, um, there's, there's a variety because of the companies working there, etc., or because of the, uh, the choice of Singapore. I don't know, like, it just creates a space that's quite small, but that's full with filled with different cultures. Um, and also natively, right, I think Singapore has um, a mix of cultures and Singapore itself is born from a mix of Malay, Chinese, um, um, Indonesian. So, um, so, so, so there's this whole mix going on, which really means that it's, it's not labeled in any culture and it's more open, I would say, to, um, to, 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 to anyone being a bit who they want to be and to bring their own culture there. That's kind of the feeling uh, I have and, 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 and the feeling I get. And if I can actually say it's quite similar to what I feel in London. Um, and that's also maybe why I feel London is 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 a home, right? It's it's because um, of the, maybe the the choice of central London living here. Of course, like it's very different in different areas, but it's it's a place where people mix a lot, uh, where people from different countries choose to settle uh, in in right. mixed you know couples, um, and and so it just creates this environment where you walk in the street and you hear like Spanish, Japanese, um, English, of course, um, American, and so. I think that makes me feel like it's a place where I can more easily belong and fit in than a place that is one culture and where I have to adapt a lot more to the one way of doing. Um, so I think it's because there's no the difference between majority and minority. And probably in Singapore, that's also kind of the feeling, right? Like it's, of course there's a majority, but you can see it a lot less and the minorities just create the majority in a way. So I think that's what I find so so special about these places. Right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. I actually just need to ask also this. Can you still speak in Singlish? <laughs> it's mixed. Like, uh, no. Okay. Okay. La. This is... Okay. Can. <laughs> like okay. Can. Pass already. You pass. <laughs> you heard the law. Can. You pass already. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I used to I used to speak a bit with a Malay accent because two of my best friends here in London are from Malaysia, and so I would I would kind of right. spend so much time with them that I would speak the same way, but but now like uh, it's it's a bit of a mix, yeah. <sighs> All right. Okay, I still have two final questions for you. So yeah. the first one is this: Okay, if you can create a character or even a show, something which is basically a guaranteed hit if you put it on a Netflix, what would it be based on your life living in a global lifestyle? <laughs> um, so I do have another project with Project Roots that uh, that is it's not top secret, but it's it's definitely like the seed of something which is related to that and something I've been working on for a while. I guess it's more geared towards children, um, but it's, it's this idea of like creating... Um, uh, in the same way that you have like Finding Nemo and um, all these all these um, animation movies with with little characters and you know each person can find themselves in different characters and um, I'm I'm imagining and also you know the little Mr. Men book you know Mr. Happy Mr. Um, you know those little square books um, with the different different Mr. So there's a whole collection. I don't know if you know, if you know, it's maybe not, but like of different uh, characters um, based on different emotions. So Mr. Happy, Mr. Tickle, oh, yeah, Mr. Yeah. Angry, Mrs. Yeah, I'm familiar. Yeah. yeah. I'm familiar with it. So each has a little story, right? So my idea is to, is to create this with trees. And so have trees, you know, different character, tree characters. So you'd have like the, 
the coconut tree, which is like the cool kid with the skateboard. And then you'd have like the, um, <laughs> the willow tree, which is like the really emo kid, you know? I'm not, um, I'm not judging, I'm not judging. I'm trying to imagine <laughs> how it will look like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But can they move? Yeah, of move? course. So the idea is that they would go on adventures, right? And this All idea right, being that, you know, a life, you know, a life in one place is not as, you know, thrilling and exciting as a life like living, you know, going on many adventures, but knowing that you can always have these roots that you can put down anywhere you choose. Um, that's something that, you know, I imagine with, with little tree characters and, and embodying like different types of personalities with different types of trees and creating like animated characters. So that's something that I'm, I'm working on. Okay. Okay. Um, when you are <laughs> done with it, please let me know. Please let me know. We, yeah. I will definitely share it on my own social media pages. That's definitely <laughs> something worth reading. If you ever, if you also need help illustrating it, uh, I know Miss Winnie Gu, who is actually mm -hmm. running Third Culture Chinese, then mm -hmm. she can definitely help you out with that. Cool. All right. Great. All right. Uh, Camille, this is mm -hmm. going to be your last question. Okay. I want you to imagine when you were younger, uh, imagine your younger self in front of you, and what would you tell her about your life as a TCK? What would you advise her? And mm -hmm. why I actually want to ask this is because as we grow older, we realize if we had done certain things differently, or if we had embraced certain things, we had tried something new, maybe growing up as a TCK would be a lot more easier. Mm. Because it's not that we don't appreciate the life that we have now, but at least if you had known this a lot younger back then, it would have make it a lot better mm. in a sense. So yeah, that's going to be our last question. <sighs> That's a great one. Um, Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I was so first thing that comes up is that I. So in general, like I don't, I don't live in the past. Like I don't like having regrets because I just feel like I'm. We, I made the choices I made, and I, you know, had the emotions I had, and there's no way to, if you want to, to change that. It's it's the way it was, and it's in the past. But in a way, like when I think about myself growing up, like I. I think a big, maybe maybe a big big breakthrough I had in the recent years uh, with a lot of sort of personal development uh, courses that I did was how maybe I was holding a lot of um, not anger but a lot of resent towards my parents for having made us move around this much, and I think you know I in the course of this like uh, personal development course um, journey I I realized that you know they were doing the best. They, they 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 could for and they wanted for us and for as a family and and for them as parents to be happy and that's what's most important when you know you you raise kids it feels like I don't have kids but I, I can I can see how you know being happy as parents is what will also make your children happy and I had a beautiful childhood right and I again like I told you like I don't hold any grudges or anything but I think maybe one thing I would tell myself younger is just to um, to to be a lot more grateful for the parents I have and grateful for, um, for these experiences um, and, and changes because it's what has made Project Roots happen, right? Like without this life growing up um, in, in different worlds and culturally fluid, like I wouldn't, I wouldn't have this project and I wouldn't have this life purpose. So it's, it's literally made me who I am. So I think a message of being, being grateful, but also, and this something I always share is, um, something my dad also told me recently is to, um, is to, it's a Bruce Lee quote, be water, my friend, um, or be as water, my friend, because, you know, when we grow up in these, in these, in these cultures and identities that are a bit, that's very fluid, uh, but yet the world is trying to put us in boxes and like, you know, frame up like country and city and like this culture is like that. And we're just trying to be fluid. I think one thing to to keep in mind is not to play that same game and try and like go against these things, but more like just be water and like see through all the holes that you can and adapt in all the ways that you can, because ultimately like that's the most powerful thing you can do, right? It's water is really powerful, even though you just take it and it's like, you know, in a cup, but it can also be a huge like waterfall with so much energy that it gives us light. And so, yeah, 
I think being grateful and, and being a lot more um, uh, like water. All right, all right. And just as a reminder, as an adult, you can move around so you can go back to your own, to the country that you miss. Yeah, exactly. You, you'll never have the same exact experience, but you can definitely like, yeah, exactly, creates, recreates what you, what, what you're seeking and what's calling. Mm. Yeah, I actually have a, I actually share somewhat similar of that, but for me it's because mm. I came back as an adult and by then I've already had my own mindset, I've already had my own horizon, how I approach things. And then suddenly I was told, you have to be this way, you have to slow down, you have to pay a certain respect in a certain way, which I actually am not able to accept is because mm when the way I look at it, shouldn't you guys learn from me instead of me learning to backstep and follow what you guys are doing? Because at the end is, well, mm -hmm. you want to be better. You want to be connected to the world instead of just being part of something. But I actually agree with what you said on Bruce Lee's quote. And I think this is something that we, one thing that to accept being a water is that it doesn't mean you have to exactly be a water. You can be a soda for all I care. You can be a tea. And at the end of the day, you can still adjust, but it does not mean you have to lose your identity, what you have learned, what you have acquired in the past. Mm. All right. Yeah, I okay. love that. You're right. It can be fizzy. It can be tea. It can be beer. It can be anything. Yeah. I, I'll be the beer. I haven't been, uh, <laughs> I haven't drank for a year, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. So that is actually the last question for this episode. And just, I actually just want to add on something different for this time. And it is also pertaining to the current situation of the world today. So this is actually a video done by the Try Guys, which explains the segregation issue that happens in the United States. While the title is on anti-Asian, they actually give a very, very elaborate, beautiful explanation on the segregation issue that happens within the African-American community. And I haven't finished it yet, but I think they also will touch on, on other minorities. So this is something that I hope people actually learn to understand is because our life is becoming more global. The, one thing that the pandemic has shown us is that doing things the old fashioned way does not always work. For one thing, in the past, in 2020, most business have survived by using Zoom. So if you guys do not want to adapt to it, it's up to you. But the thing is, is that this generation will learn to adapt and we have to embrace the change. So on that note, I actually just want to send my thanks to Camille for making the time to come here today. Thank you so thank much you for Kevin. the beautiful, you're most welcome. Thank for, I ever thank you on all the beautiful explanation you did. I really love them. And yeah, do check out some of Camille's work. It's at Project Roots. All of the social media links is located there. Mm -hmm. And if you do want to create your own commission art project, Please let her know. Uh, I am looking forward to see that. And with that, that's the end of Global Citizens, episode 85, illustrating the roots of your homes. There's also some, some link for Canva credit and a $10 credit for StreamYard if you're interested to try on something new. And with that, do take care of everyone and have a good day. This replay will be available on my Instagram TV and my YouTube, and it will be edited. And, and all right. See you guys. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Thank you.